empieza el flow. Esta es la nueva era, pero baila todo. Bailona de Maluma y Tego Calderón. La nena está bien puesta para cualquier canción. No taco y Ronnie, empieza el flow. Esta es la nueva era, pero baila todo. Bailona de Maluma y Tego Calderón. La nena está bien puesta para cualquier canción. No taco y Ron, Come hueso, el que a ti te baila sabe eso Y nos ponemos bien traviesos, esos son efectos del proceso Solo con esa mirada sé lo que quieras Se ven muy educaditas y sus deberes Siempre ha sido la envidia de las mujeres Por toda esa belleza y cómo se mueve Es como tú me dejas después del party en ti pensando Que pienses en lo mismo que yo estoy pensando Escondernos en la playa jugando a solas de madrugada <risa> Ella quiere
what's going on? In the chat room. City. Age. Gender. Let's get it. see Terry in here. Devastating DST in the house. Oh yeah. Detroit 45, Dallas 28, New Orleans. Memphis, Fayetteville. Class is in session, you damn right. Tyler, Texas. Virginia Beach. St. Louis. Charlotte. Rockford. Let's go. Red Bull. Fragrance of the night. Francis Kirk John. Silk Mood. The night spit. None other than the master Tom Ford. The classic black winds of suit. Yeah, baby. What's going on, people? Welcome back. Welcome back to what's becoming a 10 o'clock weeknight ritual over here on my channel. Who the nude it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming back because we want to get into this subject tonight. The subject tonight is going to be a doozy. And we're going to, and we're going to, dovetail it with the Will and Jada Pinkett story, okay? Will and Jada Pinkett uh, actually gave me the perfect lead-in to the story I want to get into. And you see by the title of the stream. You see the title of the stream. What does it say? Are you willing to give relationships a second chance? Are you willing to give relationships a second chance? That goes to men and women. And if so, who goes first? Who goes first? So before we get into this, guys, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that like button. That's where all the action is down there on the likes. Got to get the likes up. We want to keep the likes or dislike ratio up to at least 50%. So at least I know you feels like you're paying attention. If you want to support the show, support your godfather, it's easy. Three simple, several different ways. You can go ahead and hit the Cash App link. The moderator is going to put that in the description. I appreciate the Cash App because it skips YouTube. Or you can do PayPal, which is even better. It skips YouTube and comes direct and skips... Uh, the processing fee it comes directly to moi or you can hit the super chat which a lot of people i know like to hit the super chat so they feel like they're getting their love they're seeing that they, you know they're seeing the name up in lights and here hey man i feel you i feel you i feel you i feel you but here's the only downside about that when we do that 
when we do that, um, YouTube takes their share and that's a full 30%. YouTube takes a full 30% and then they hold it for 60 days. And then you got to pay uncle Sam. So let's say if you decide to drop in a hundred dollars, you realize that I only see what, like $50 of that 90 days from now. I mean, for real, that ain't what you intended to do. I know. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Kevin Samuels. I'm a certified personal and corporate image consultant. Yes, baby. Uh, my tagline is lifestyle coach over here. I talk about men becoming the best version of themselves by being CIA confident, intelligent, and assertive. When a man is CIA, he can get to the best portions of him in life. And then correspondingly, women should be FBI, feminine, beautiful, and inspirational. Those two things go together like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> like spam and eggs, like hash browns and bacon. Mm, God got me hungry over here. So if you're new to my channel, give yourself a little time to get used to the terminology. I say things that you may not understand from time to time. If you have any questions, the people who are the channel OGs, the veterans, they'll kind of clue you in. Ask the question in the, in the room and people will kind of point you in the right direction. But do me a favor, don't single me out. Don't highlight my name and ask me that question. Highlighting is what you use the at sign um, because that's rude. It kind of skips you to the head of the line. If you really want to get my attention, there's one way to do it. You put it in Super Chat and then I'll get to your question directly. Shout out to Jeremiah. So we want to get into this subject tonight, serious business, because uh, if, ter if Terry is in the house, Terry, uh, I have been interested in relationships for the longest, the longest on the interpersonal dynamic, because I, I saw it coming up. My mother and father weren't married and I saw more single mothers in my neighborhood and no real fathers. I saw a lot of dysfunctional relationships and what I often asked, but then I went to my high school and then I saw lots of married black people. I went to a high, a, a junior high and a high school that was Cosby before Cosby was Cosby. So my day to day life looked dysfunctional like most people's, but my, uh, my, my home life looked dysfunctional like most people, but my school life, I was being taught by some of the best and the brightest in the state. We had college level professors teaching in our school. Why is that important? Because what it showed me was what, what, when two people decide they want to get together and do things right and a neighborhood of couples can do Millwood for all intents and purposes was a private black school in the middle of red state, Oklahoma. We were top in academics. Our band was the best in the state and we were champs in basketball and football in short. If you went to the wood, stuff was good. Um, now, I will say several of the people I know that I went to high school with, some were high school sweethearts, yada, yada. Some people got married right out of high school or out of college. Um, but I will say the people I went to high school with, the larger majority of them are coupled right now. Me, you know, I've talked about I'm never going to get specific into my background because I mean, it's YouTube and as my channel grows, I mean, come on guys. Um, I got to have a little bit of privacy. One thing that I realized as I was at the university of Oklahoma and as I started to become an adult is that in order to do relationship, a lot of things had to happen and more than anything, in order to have a long lasting relationship, there was going to have to be some forgiveness. There was going to have to be some forgiveness and some daggum understanding. 
How many people in the chat room want to raise your hand and say, I've either, you've either been married or in a serious relationship and it flopped. If that's you, if you've been either married or in a, a relationship of more than two years and it went nowhere, put a one in the chat room. Put a one in the chat room. And the sad thing is, why is, you know, in black America, we don't think a two-year relationship is long. But yeah, it is. There you go. Look at all those ones. In black America, we have, we're, Will and Jada showed us, put black America on display. When Jada was talking about her entanglements. You know, black folks originated the Facebook relationship status. It's complicated. Or situationship. All of these things to define what normal people would have called marriage. There's no way you should be dating somebody for two, three plus years and it goes nowhere. But sadly, it's, it's kind of the norm in the black community. We know about the history of dysfunction that we have in our in our community. Look at Will and Jada. You could look at the pain in that man's eyes as he was having to have his squeaky clean, all-American golden boy reputation run through the freaking mud because his wife, it's not their open marriage that was the problem in this particular situation. It was her sloppy handling of this situation. She should have actually buttoned August up in an ironclad uh, non-disclosure agreement so he could never speak. Okay? But what about, the, what about the regular folks? Us regular people, you and me. What about the regular folks like you and I? And I've talked about it before. The danger zone is the area between 27 and 35 where most women wouldn't normally be married where women start to panic. But between the age of 36 and 60, 36 and 60, really, and that 24 year period is where a lot of early, late baby boomers, Generation X, and elder millennials should be married. Most of us should be married right now. That's right. The majority of us should be married. Some of us have been married. Myself, I've been married twice. Why are we, why can't we get together and stay together? My Patreon only live stream today, I talked about how we need to improve relationship skills on the men and the women's side. I'm going to tackle it deeply on the guy side, but I'm going to go ahead and skip the ball forward because in order to improve relationships, First off, something has to happen. There has to be a air of forgiveness and a second chance. I'm going to play something for you guys. I want to see. This is often. This is all too common in the black community. Hi, good evening. How are you doing today? Okay, I'm going to need you. To, I'm good. I need you to mute out, to close the YouTube channels and stuff in the background. I can hear all that noise. Okay, hold on, please. Hey, let me go ahead and unmute you. You got music going on in the background. <clears throat> you can't have nope. any noise in the background. Ahmad, uh, if you think that woman had a point, how about this? That's what Brother Sperling was talking about. Are you? Your microphone. Hello, uh, Allison, go ahead. Hi. How are you? Yes, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. How are you today? Good. What did I get wrong? Um, I don't know if you got anything wrong. I just want to know what the solution is. I am double nickels. I'm 55. I am a yoga teacher. And, you know, I feel good about life. I feel good about myself. But I am single. And I've been divorced. Okay. And so, you know, just what is the solution? 
Well, what lane? The question was the 55, remember the 55 year old yoga teacher came in and said she's double nickels. I've been married. I've been divorced. Now I want to know what is the solution? What is the solution? How do we go through from this point from, you know, I said from 36 to 60, it's that period of time. What's the solution? Let's, <clears throat> if you didn't see this, give me about 10 minutes. We're going to break this down and then we're going to get into the second part of the broadcast. Uh, before we do that though, man, we got 1300 people watching. We don't have enough likes. If we don't get these likes up, we're going to stop it and go to intermission. Get them up. You know, I, I don't know. Really I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you got, you're throwing a lot at me. So 55, you, how long were you married? I was married for six years. Uh, at what age did you get married? I was 36 when I got married. And you divorced 42, so you've been divorced for 13 years? Yes. Any children? No children. Okay. So why 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 do you wait so late to marry? Um I guess career pretty much profession. Um I asked, why did you wait so late to get married? One of the first things in the black community you often hear is 21. That's too young to be getting married. That's too young to be getting married. I needed to. How many times do you hear our black women say, I felt like I needed to get my career together. I need to get out here and get my career, my career. And I mean, no disrespect, ladies, but I need you to understand something that 80 percent of you do not have careers. You have jobs. 80 percent of you do not have careers. You have jobs, a career, meaning a doctor, lawyer, an accountant. When you own your own practice, you own your own business. Most of the largest employers of the black female is the federal government and retail. Those aren't careers. Those are jobs. So what I told this woman, it was the honest to God truth. Far too many of us, especially in our generation, we, the women were told, don't de de depend on no man, get out there, get your career, get yourself straight. And then when you decide you want to get married, you can just go pull a husband off the man tree. Well, this is what happens to that thought process. I just have you been a yoga teacher hair, right? your entire career? I have not. I was a hairstylist prior to. So I know plenty of hairstylists and yoga teachers that seem to be able to get married just fine. Um, I guess it wasn't exampled in my family. And so it wasn't something that I really, you know, kind of went towards. So how about so. this? How about we just, instead of just saying career, because when you say that to a brother like myself, mm -hmm. I hear disingenuous. What I'm hearing really? when you say career, oh, wow. you better, now let me tell you why. Okay. You, you want to hear, do you want to hear it or you just? Yes, of course. All right. When you tell me you're 55 and you're a yoga, mm -hmm. te a yoga teacher and a hairstylist, you can't tell me you didn't, you put off marriage because of a career, because where I'm coming from, unless you are a multi a international business, that ain't no career to be putting anything on hold for. That's what most men hear. That was not rude. So I mean, you if you think? say a career, you need to be arguing before the Supreme Court. You need to have a show enough damn business because a hairstylist, I can throw a rock and hit 10 hairstylists on the corner and they can find husbands. I can throw a rock that way and find any massage therapist, yoga teacher, whatever. And white women mm -hmm. can get married. So it's, men don't hear that. The second part makes more sense. Wasn't raised to prioritize it. That makes more sense. Okay. Because at 55, um, when you got your, when you and your husband divorced, uh, what was the, what was the cause? Um, infidelity mainly. Yes. How many times did you cheat on him? <laughs> she wasn't expecting that one. Oh, wow. That's an interesting <laughs> curve that you threw. Why? It wasn't on me. Why? Black it was women, on him. Black women cheat at... Black women cheat at four percentage points less than black men. Well, no, that was on him. It wasn't me. Okay. Well, you said infidelity. Okay. So infidelity, was it uh, rampant? Um, it was enough 
<laughs> I stayed long enough through it enough to where it was. was it, well, I'm trying to find out. Was it with one person? Was it with no, one? that's what I'm saying. No, it wasn't. It was with one, okay. just one person. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what was your longest relationship before your marriage? My longest relationship before my marriage. Wow. Was probably um, three years. And what age were you when that started? That, I'm thinking right um, high school, really. Okay. This is not about this woman in particular. So I don't want anyone giving her a hard time. Sister here, I could take her and plug in many a sister from Generation X. She got married one time in her 30s. Like a lot of these women were told to go get married in your 30s. And what ends up happening? She had had no history of being in a relationship and it inevitably failed because I asked about her previous relationship and we had to go all the way back to high school. Sophomore year to high school. Again, that's the age when so many of our sisters I say you you found the love of your life. You already had your man and you likely blew it. Remember from junior year in high school to uh, sophomore year in college. That's when most women find their men. And this is when black women are getting rid of their men in preparation for this great and wonderful life that's supposed to happen. When everyone else is getting their men, black women are getting were taught, told to get rid of their men. They were also told not to get serious about these guys because you're young, he's young, have your fun, but don't get serious. That's what our sisters were told. These young 20, these young 19 and 20 year old women had a bunch of older baby boomer women telling them, girl, don't you worry about no man. You have your fun, do your thing, but don't get tied down. And I tell you right now, I know so many men who were heartbroken during this time. Loved their girlfriends, their living girlfriends or whatever, and their girlfriends broke up with them and did the entire thing I talked about in you already found your men and you blew it. Okay? So... Then after they did all this stuff that this sister, just like everyone else did around mid 30, because, uh Oh, I better get married. Then get married, but you got no track record of being with anybody. Weren't trained to be with anybody. And inevitably it falls apart. No surprise. Was yeah, that I think high in school? high school, um, it was like the 10th grade to my, my first year in college. Okay. Yep. So from 15, so from 16 to 19, yeah. Okay. Then you then you skipped all the way up until thirty six. Guys, don't give her well, a hard not time. Not that I didn't date. I did date, no, but no, no, serious no, relationships. No, 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 no. I'm just counting serious relationships. Yes, certainly. Sixteen to nineteen, then all mm -hmm. the way to thirty six, and then you were with this person for how long? You were married for were you guys get together six years total, or married six years? Um, I would say seven years total okay so you knew him for a year and you're married for six so here's here's your so if i mapped out your relationships you were born in 64 65 65 65 you were yes you were with somebody from high school 10th grade to your freshman year in college and then from that point on from 19 to 35 double almost twice your lifetime you had no serious relationship you met somebody for one year, you married them, and you divorced after six years. And then you've been single for 12. Your entire life, you've been single. That's fair. Yeah. So you don't have... Again, black men and black women were not... Our culture, our culture is not one that told us we were supposed to be together. Black men were not raised to be husbands. Black women were not raised to be wives. I said this on my broadcast earlier today. Most, a lot of black men, far too many black men, we stopped maturing 
when we left the playground. Go watch that stream I put on Patreon. People skills. We don't have the people skills. We don't have relationship skills. We come together short term, but long term marriage, the kind of stuff that's complicated. Are we really equipped? Are you willing to give relationship a second chance? That's the question on the floor. Well, yeah, so you don't have a track record of being with a man. You don't have a track record of uh, cooperating with a man, serving a man, anything like that. You have Oh, I serve my husband. No, I definitely serve my husband. Ma'am. <laughs> he I would say, tell you that. Ma'am, ma'am, ma I'm not trying to insult. I said a track record of serving a man over the long term, over a life. Six years in a marriage, I'm not taking anything away from that. But I'm saying that's in, it's over a period of a lifetime. That's what I'm saying. So the future going forward, um, what is it you would want? Well, I definitely would like to have. Now, again, the question I asked, if you've had a life of not being in relationships and now here it is towards the middle part of life, at the, you're at the tail end of life. You're two thirds of the way done. What do you want now? Are you willing to give it a second chance? You got to understand the question. Obviously, if you're younger, this question doesn't weigh as heavy on you as 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 it does with people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. The people who've had a, a lot of trauma, issues, bad memory. These are the people we're asking. Are you willing to give her stuff a second chance? I mean, again. She's not 25, she's 55. But again, I could take her out and plug any of the previous women I've talked to or any of the guys I've talked to because you've heard me talk to guys who ain't been in relationships for 10, 15 years. So guys, don't be getting all in there talking about old eggs and all this other kind of stuff. I'm looking at you too because all I got to do is go back and pull the guys who talking about they ain't been in a relationship for 15 years but then go call in talking about how about your relationships. French toast you mean a serious relationship and a lifelong partner okay. i would okay uh going forward <laughs> to what end to the end <laughs> i mean to what end i mean why um because i think it's god ordained you know for relationships i mean i feel like love is a burp, burp, wonderful burp, burp, burp. thing hold on no i do you're 55 and yeah. you're saying it's God ordained relationship yeah. companionship. I, I, say, okay, I believe. All right, you you call so I'm, a, I'm okay. I hear you, but it's hard to hear that it's God ordained and you're 55, and you have no real long track record of being with a man. See, it's not like you can say you've been in and out of relationships. You have but I think that would be foolish and frivolous if that were the case and it weren't wasn't serious. So I choose not to casually date anybody well your best again so many of these sisters were taught that d d fear black men fear relationship don't waste your time again remember black men were just baby boomers set these women up for a failure better to be with nobody than wasting your time oh really well, did you learn how to be involved with anybody in that time? Did anybody learn how to be involved? The longer you're alone, the less you learn how to be involved with anybody. Ladies or gentlemen, this goes for you too, men. The longer you're alone, the less you learn how to be involved with anybody. So stop talking about 55 next caller. If I got you on this line, I guarantee you, you probably got some shit going on with you too because I can tell by the way you type, you probably are the person I'm talking to as well. Can got you where you are right now and you're calling me. <laughs> Your best thing can got you where you are right now and you're calling me and asking. And like most sisters, you got your mind made up and... Well, I don't want to casually date anyone. It doesn't matter what you what you want, ma'am. See, yeah, you you spent your entire life being in charge. Uh, I guess a great portion of it. You're sure. fifty five, ma'am. You have your your entire life. 
your, your, your high school, it really doesn't count. The only relationship in your life that truly counts is the year you dated, the year you dated somebody and you got married. You have been Get them likes up before we go to intermission. Life, you've had one relationship. Is that a bad thing? For what? Again, what did I just say? Black folks, we have been taught to believe being single is a good thing. I said, you spent your entire adult life out of relationship. And it was like, is that bad? French toast, yeah, it's bad. What do you mean? <laughs> life is about people. Life is about relationships. We are not meant to go through this thing by ourselves. And you, come on, man. Come on, ladies. Come on, gentlemen. 5% of men are truly alpha, alpha, alpha who are going to go through life by themselves. Five out of 100. And I can guarantee you, if that's you, you are not on this stream. You can say it's what you are. You may be alpha with some beta traits, but you are not straight up alpha, alpha because you don't listen to no man. Knock it off. Everybody's looking for answers because our culture is jacked. To where we can get to this point in life and be like, is it is it is it bad to not be in with somebody for 15 years? If you're saying you want to have a husband, you want yes. Oh, okay. First time I'm, I'm ever hearing that. How many black men have you? I mean, she said it's the first time she's hearing it. And this is there's so many of us that thought this that like relationship is this switch you can turn on and off. No, it is not. Let me be the first one to tell you. People skills get rusty. Some of you never got them. This is why you're going to have to get therapy to make sure you got a clean bill of health and then one-on-one -on -one coaching with somebody because you didn't get the relationship skills out on the playground or at recess or in the neighborhood when you were seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, you know, under 12 years old because from 13 up, Many of you were latchkey kids. Unless you were Generation X, you didn't have playgrounds and go outside and play. Many of you guys were in the home playing video games. Your relationship skills stopped in the fifth, fourth or fifth grade. And you're finding that it's easy to go find somebody to scratch that itch, but you can't sit in the room with them. The only, if the only room you can get along with the, uh, the opposite sex is the bedroom. You've got problems. Yes. I've had quite a few conversations. I mean, I would like to feel like I don't want to be spent and used up when he does come. Let me, let me I mean... stop you right here, ma'am. <laughs> uh, let me just get real with you, ma'am. 55 days ain't much left to use. You, oh, it's mean, a lot to you. It's no, no. trust and believe. Oh, no, I'm not gonna do that. No, not it's not. That. See, we allow. See, this we allow. We we allow our sisters who are you. You're half a hundred, and you're talking like you're in your twenties. Like you got all this time and all this, uh, the juice left, ma'am. You'll be you. You're almost retirement age. Talking like you got all this time left. And so well, we, that's how and I we feel. do that. And, and we, but I feel that's how you like feel. that. I don't give a damn how you feel. You were born in 1960 fucking five. Okay. You're old, like me. Talk like it. But you're talking like a well, young, silly girl. Why am I? Well, okay. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't feel silly, and I definitely don't feel I don't, old. but it's not about how you feel, man. And it I'm not is. trying to insult. Okay, see, and and, and, you know, and here's what I'm doing. I'm coming it's at you. It's not about how I, I need you to listen. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm purposely triggering you to see how you're going to respond and see how you're responding. This means you're not really cut out for a man like myself or somebody on my level or really anybody. Why would you say that? Because, man, you ladies, I need you to ask yourself a question. Does the woman that I'm speaking to sound like she is cut out for a relationship with anyone? This is not an insult, but I want to hear the ladies 
not the men, because women tend to, especially women in my generation, tend to hear other women more than they hear us. Ladies, does your sister right here sound like she has the relationship skills, temperament, patience, um, or desire to be in a relationship with anyone? Ladies, that's a yes or no. Give her some, give her some feedback. Only the ladies. I'm anyway. responding irrationally. Go back and look in the chat room, man. Because when you say me, when you well, tell me, when you tell me at fifty, when you tell Zoom. me at fifty, no, no, when I I'm, go back and look in the chat room, when this, I'm not looking at it either. But when you say, okay, when I'm listening to a fifty-five year old woman talk about how she feels, I feel like I got more time. You can feel like it all you'd want to, man. Man, fifty-five years old. Think about when we were children. Okay, think about when we, you and I, are roughly the same age. Your grandmother. Do you feel like, how was your grandmother when you were born? No, oh, you making me challenge my math skills. How old was my what grandmother? Your grandmother born? She, was, she was born in 1917. 1917. So 1917. So when you, yes. my grandfather was born in 1919 and 1924. So your grandmother is seven years older than mine. So when you're, so you got to tell me when you were looking at your grandma at 55 years old, you saw you? No. What did you see? <laughs> exactly. I just, and that's saw, what, and that's I what just you, saw my grandmother. But right. But the thing is, when your grandmother was 55 years old, could you imagine her saying what you're saying? No. My grandmother. Now she was special. So. Well, apparently so. But you get, <laughs> see, see, when I put it in context like that, man. See, here's the thing: most people won't risk telling older black women the truth, because one, most older black women don't want to hear the truth. Two, you got so many things to keep telling you what you want to hear. But the reality is, at 55, what is the average lifespan of a, a black man in this country? 77, I believe, 76 for a black man. 71. Actually, 68. <laughs> 68 in the average it's lifespan. Gone down. For, mm. Yes. It's actually gone up with the marital rate decreasing. So men, so the men you will be dating, how many men are left in your age, in your in your generation to date? Another question that a lot of women don't think about is. She feels like she's still in her 20s or 30s. She's 55. That's damn near retirement age. And today, John Travolta announced he lost his wife, Kelly Preston. Our condolences, Mr. Travolta. Kelly Preston is 57 years old. This is what I mean by dying alone. We're at the age where people start to die. Don't have time to be wasting and playing. That's why I'd say Steve Harvey and guys like that who don't tell women the, the other side of the story are giving, doing them a disservice because if you don't tell the, the, the honest to God truth and reality, we're the logical ones. She's really, I mean, she was shocked by some of the things that I was saying. Why? When you're a yoga instructor and a, and a hairstylist, that's a female-dominated profession. There are no men around to tell you anything or say anything. Oh, I don't know those statistics. I'm sorry. Well, you're, 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 you're a late millennial, but you're not a boomer. No, so, you're right. The men that are age-appropriate for you are dead or on or I mean, there are not a lot of men and they're not looking for women uh, who have no relational history. If they're looking to have a partnership, ma'am, guys are going to say, what are we, what are we going to get from this? Uh, and you may be a lot of things, but are you, do you have a history of cooperating with a man and your life says that you don't? That's not an insult. Somebody looking from 18 to your to right now, they look at 37 years and only for a period of seven years do you have a history Yeah, I said millennial, I'm in Generation X. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
Does that make <laughs> sense? I'm listening. I'm not sure if it makes sense, but, but I'm listening to you. She said that what I'm saying, if she's not sure it makes sense. Now, again, I got to speak to you, sis. You're 55. All I used was simple, basic logic. And when I use the example of our grandmothers, my grandmother at 55, I felt as though she was sage. She had some wisdom, the wisdom of a life lived. I sat at the feet of my grandparents and my great grandparents in awe and reverence. When we would sit there and watch, you know, the Ten Commandments and things like that, I would sit at my grandmother's feet when I would, I would, it was an honor for me to go make my grandmother coffee. It was an honor for her to ask me to go to the store to get her snuff. It was an honor for me to do anything for that old woman because I could look in that woman's eyes and tell that she had lived life. Okay. Well, any other question I can answer because I don't know what else to say. I mean, you, you I mean, your life, it's your life from 18. Well, according to you, I'm in the grave. <laughs> pretty, you're close there. Okay. You, you're closer to the grave. You're closer to the grave. You're closer to the grave. than you have more time. And see, that is one of the things I, I, I am trying to get, especially people in our generation to stop acting like we're so young because we're not. Just because but we I'm don't, in health and wellness. My whole mindset care. is different. You're still 55. It's, mm. it's okay, but my All life right. has All right. been in health and wellness. And how and is so that working I, out? Good, but how's that? But it's not about you and your life. It's about. But if I don't take care of me first, okay, you're right. And prepare myself. You're right. You're right. For you're right. The person that God is going to send my way, then. So I no, ma'am. Let me go ahead and knock that. Let me go. You, ahead, let me go ahead. And but knock, you know me, what I've heard. You She said that uh, if she did not prepare herself first for the man, the person that got, who are you? Sarah? 55? And this is when I lost it because so many of our sisters have been taught. This is all they got to hold on to. Honestly, this is what all they got to hold on to. This has to be God ordained. That's why I'm by myself. God, it has to be God's will. And no, it is not. So it's time to get real into this. It's almost over. But this is where I lost it because I have seen so many of our sisters live this. I, I'm getting myself ready for what God has for me. No, God has been sending you stuff your entire life. You have just not been willing to work it. No, 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 no. Let me go ahead. No, no, no. You're not going to over talk me. You're not going to put this shit off on God. You're not going to put this off on God. And she's still talking. You're still talking. I had to mute you. Go roll your eyes all you want to. I'm looking dead at you. And you're still talking. Mute it. <laughs> Acting like a and you wonder why we don't deal with older women because you're sitting, I'm sitting there talking to a woman who is 55 years old, trying to tell me that you don't feel 55 and because I'm in health and wellness and go ahead and unmute yourself, man. Unmute. Well, what else am I supposed to say? If I'm in health and wellness and I have for 30 years been in this industry, taking care of myself, preparing myself, for what? doing it, preparing I yourself for what? For the rest of my life. You just said for the man that God sent you, right? Exactly. But okay, that's so still it's, for the so rest of okay, my life. So I need you to answer me a question. They are synonymous. Excuse me. I need you to answer the rest of your life. She is talking with the attitude of a woman who has another 70 years. Kelly Preston died today at 57. 
So when I ask the question, are you willing to give relationship a second chance? In order to have a relationship that's going, in order to do that, one critical thing needs to happen. And I need you to remember this sister right here is far more emblematic of the uh, many of our sisters today than the minority. Let's get these likes up, man. Let's get them up. I'm going to open the call lines. And guys, you're not excluded from this too because you got some hard head views. Give me a question. Are you a Christian? I am a Christian. So is is marriage and relationship a a God ordained oh, or hold is it on, a hold natural on. choice? Hey, daughter of the king, you make sure you come. Make sure you get your big head ass on up in here too, because just like most women, so breaking her down is the solution. No, it's not. You get your big head ass on up in here too, because if you daughter of the king, guess what? I'm the son of him, and you still are under me. Make sure you got. Make sure you the first one to call in. I would like to say for myself, it's no, ma'am. You're a Christian. You're a Christian. You don't get to pick your Christianity. Please answer according to the Christianity you say you believe in and you're trying to stand on. It's God ordained. It is not God ordained. It is a natural choice. I taught church singles ministry in three different churches. Okay. And we are, go look on my broadcast about three weeks ago talking about Christian feminists. You sitting there telling me that God, God see, if, if, if it was God, then God, then you can say God is responsible for you not having nobody. Nope. You get a chance to pick. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. You no. would not say you don't have a choice to pick? No, I wouldn't say God is responsible for me Well, then me it's not God single. ordained. It's a natural choice. Have you ever sat down with a counselor or a therapist? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, and what, and were there's any clinical diagnosis? No, it wasn't. Uh, did you talk about relationships? Absolutely. Yes. And what is, and, and what was the, pro and what'd you ask? Did you ask what? What'd you ask your therapist? I mean, several different questions. It was, it's been definitely years ago, but yeah, several different years questions ago, along those ago? lines. During the time I was married. Okay. Okay. So from, you got married at 36. Yes. So from the age of 19 to 36, you never consulted a therapist to find out why you were by yourself? Not from that time. No, I did not. So you saw everybody else in the world in getting married, moving on, and you didn't think there was something a little out of place. No, indeed. I didn't. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and again, it's not like you had this high power career. You were a hairstylist. But you had clients that came in who were talking about husbands, children, family. But you didn't have any of that. Right? Correct. And you didn't think there's a reason. I did not. Well... <laughs> No, sir. I I'm did just not. saying. So uh, again, and no one that you and who could risk talking to you and telling you. See, a, a big part of us trying to resolve any issues we have is that there's something off, something wrong. And I would say that if you say what if what you want if if what you say you want is true, in a life from 18 to 30, 55, you have seven years of cooperating with a man. Seven years. Most of your life is spent in not cooperation. That's not, I don't understand how you expect to get something out of that when you have no track record of it. You've not even, you haven't even explored it. And this is what makes me so frustrated about so many of our sisters. You leave so much of it in God's hands. And, and this is bullshit. T.D. Jakes, I, I, one of the best messages I finally heard him say was, I'm tired, stop quoting me in your house I am a man. It is not God's to make you a man. You have to become a wife to be found. And so many of our sisters just feel like I'm just going to go out and live my life and do my thing. And all of a sudden, husband going to knock on the door. My suggestion, ma'am, is if you really want what you say you want out of life, 
you gotta you gotta first off you gotta answer the question why and then you have to ask the question answer the question a lot of guys gonna ask what do you bring to the table why would a guy want to couple with you partner with you what are they going to get out of it because at this point there has to be some sort of negotiation it's the best i can offer you well i appreciate it thank you so much have a great night at this point, there's going to have to be some sort of negotiation. That's where it's going to happen. So, there we go. So, and I'm glad that woman came on here saying that. So the, so the, so the solution is to break her down. No. Yep. That's right. The solution is to break all of this down. And if you don't have a stomach for it, leave. If you want to go on back over to Disneyland, you go. That's what you do. But you, but the people who are trying to figure something out realize that in order to get anything accomplished, you're going to have to look at why you're where you are, why, where you are, why you're there, where you want to get to, and what you're willing to do to get it. See, far too many of us, far too many people want relationships to be easy. Far too many people want relationships to be easy. You want it to be easy. You want it to be convenient. You don't want it to have any, you don't want it to have any problems. No, you're not. You're not. It's not. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, then there will be no, like I said, if you want what Big Mama and Big Daddy had, when Big Mama, when Big Daddy died, you found out all kind of stuff about Big Mama and Big Daddy after they died. But they didn't let the kids know. They went through life like, and they left you with something. But they were just human. Well, guess what? Where the black America is right now, it's going to be messy because we can, there, no more is hiding shit. It's going to have to be done real time because we're not in little small communities where we can just go into a church and talk it out. We don't, we, we're spread out across the United States. And here's the thing. If you want to give relationships a second chance, the only way you're going to get there is through forgiveness. You're going to have to forgive. Oh yeah, we've heard this. You've heard this. We're going to have to forgive. And that's cool. But the problem with that whole concept of forgiveness is who goes first? Is it the, are the black women supposed to go first or black men? You got to stand off. Both sides got their nuclear missiles pointed at each other. The slightest provocation and hope global thermal nuclear war breaks out. But when you finally realize that no matter what happens, there is no, no win situation, you have to decide not to go to war. That's where people are right now. But then if you want peace, if you don't want to be continually 55, 57, 37, 48, 52 by yourself, I'm working on my, cause just like, just like that sister, I took off of my career. I had a guy on here talking about he 15 years, he was working on his career. And I'm like, well, people do what you do all day long and they figure out how to get relationships. And see, I was listening to a show earlier today and it just shows in the black community here, we don't have a culture of being together. We have a culture of transactional things. And the only way you're going to get there is to give it all a second chance. And see, in order to give it a second chance, you have to, you have to forgive. And that's the end lies the problem. Because people are okay with the concept of forgiveness, but they're not okay with the concept of forgiving. Not okay with the concept of forgiving. Not okay with the concept of forgiving. What do you mean the concept of forgiving? 
That means somebody's going to have to go first. Yep. Somebody's going to have to go first. 2,000 people. We need 1,000 likes. All right. Uh, let me do this. I will block you if you say anything crazy in the chat room. I have zero tolerance for, for silliness because I'm trying to get some stuff done. We're going to open the call lines because I want to hear from the men and from the women who are willing to give it a second chance, who know they don't want to die alone. That's why I don't want to focus on that, that particular sister. I wanted to use her as an avatar for so many other things. But before we get into that, uh, we got to do this as usual. Oh, <clears throat> Woo! Yay! Luna. Make it rain them lights. Money work. Yeah, man, we need to have some fun with this, man. It's a serious topic, but we're going to have to try to lighten it up a little bit. Money work. The calling number's coming. What's going on? We got that done. Money world up in this man. We got to make the money. Make it rain up in this mug. The call line is in the chat room. Again, when you call into the show, you need to make sure you have the background noise off. You need to be uh make sure your sound connects. Um, uh, I don't have time for the trolling, anything like this. And I'm going to say this before I get into it. In order to in order to give folks a second chance, we have to be willing to do something that a lot of folks are not prepared to do. A lot of people are not prepared to operate on good faith. I mean, operate on good faith. I mean, you got to, first off, you got to forgive. You got to, for, you got to forgive yourself for making errors. You got to forgive your ex-girlfriend, your ex-wife, anybody, all that stuff. You got to get over it, man. You cannot carry that on into the next one because if you don't forgive them and forgive you, you are not going to be able to walk into something in good faith and do what needs to be done. What's what's 
What's the next thing? Understand, without relationship, without marriage, without the fundamental building blocks, you don't have a community. And like it or not, a 26% marital rate and falling, when everybody is, when I, some of the conversations I've heard from men, I'm like, what are y'all going to do? Okay, you don't, you, I hear a lot of guys talking about, you know, the court system and this and that, da, da, da. okay, then what's, your, what's the alternative? Because at the end of the day, what I hear a lot of people speaking on is coming from a place of fear. Fear of what could be, fear of what was, fear of what could happen, you know. But the funny thing is you'll get on an airplane, you'll get in the car, you'll do a lot of other things, and you'll still have sex with women with all this fear, right? But you'll you'll be you'll do some of the most vulnerable stuff with women, but you but the but real vulnerability. Huh. But see, that's the thing. Without family, without uh, without vertical relationship, without expanding other than just your selfish self, you can only get so far. I hear a lot of guys coming from a place of fear. A lot of people coming from a place of fear. A lot of people coming from a place of scarcity. Coming from a place of fear, coming from a place of scarcity. Any decision made in fear and scarcity is not a positive decision. It's not a right-handed decision. Why? Because when you listen to some folks, they're still holding on to grudges. You know one thing that we can do more than in the black community than anything else is we can hold a grudge. We can like you for a minute, but you say something or do something and we will dislike you forever one of the things i pride myself on as a content creator is i don't beef i've heard people say some of the most horrible things about me they've made video whatever because you don't know me personally and either way i get nothing into dragging out with you because when you go back and forth with people the more mud is slung the more hurt or hurled the more hurt or anger that's hurled the more crap there is to get over Guess what? It takes an incredibly strong person to say, it's all good. It's was, it bygone, it's bygone. You said what you said. I didn't say anything. Let's keep it moving. It's a position I got and I'm sticking to it. Why? Because at the end of the day, the people who come from it from a standpoint of grudges without, without good faith, coming at it from a standpoint of fear or scarcity, because many believe there's no hope. There's no hope. It is what it is. A very fatalistic, very predetermined standpoint. And that's cool. You can believe that, but I don't want to deal with you. If that's what you do, go over there because life is not in your control. You can't control it. But if that's what you believe, that means there's really no place in a new normal for them or for that kind of thought. I mean, think about it. If you're one of these kind of people that's, let's just say, you're an, you're you're uh, an Ebenezer Scrooge kind of type. Well, there's no place in a new order or new something. I mean, if you're a warrior, warriors have no place in peace. And some folks just want to fight. They're good at fighting. That's where they earn their stripes. What about the peace? They'll all, and even when there is peace, they'll look to make war. And let's say, all right, Kevin, all this stuff sounds good. But that's cool. <laughs> but that ain't for me. I ain't doing that. All right. Well, see, my guys, my guys, the one to be in the top 10 percent, the top 5 percent of men, like it or not, if you wanted the 78, if you're in the 70 to 80 percent of people who's going to work in corporate America, there is a cap or a ceiling on single men. Middle, upper executive management, you will be married. Or you won't get there. The, you will stack the deck against yourself if you lack relationships to leverage for power. All right, you don't want the traditional situations. Okay, then what's the alternative? You're going to go through your life as a single man, unmarried, unattached, no children. All right, then what's the what's the plan for life? What's what, Obsidian asks, what's your hospice care? You're going to have an in-home nurse? What you going to do? between the time of where you can't get out and work and need a home care nurse and where you're just a little slow on the giddy up. What's that plan? Because I hear far too many guys who don't have it like that. 
Far too, a lot of guys who talk a lot of noise, you don't have it anywhere close to being like that. Ladies, same thing. You've been going through life just waiting for God to settle it. And you're in your, you're in your what, 40s, 50s? I mean, what, what you going to do? What's your plan? Hmm? What's the plan? You know, <laughs> we're about to, California got shut down today with COVID. Shit is real out there. What's the plan? The chat room is open. The chat room is open. I want to hear it from you. Why are you ready? For, are you wanting to give relationships a second chance? You know, I've built my own Facebook group of like-minded men and women, and already one couple has met in, there in under a couple of months. And I was just trying to build a place where people could network or do business or interact with one another. And if a couple could already meet inside of 10 days, see, I believe that anything is possible. Is my class dog in there? Terry, didn't you want to call in? Terry, uh, Terry, hit the link. Polygamy is a, no, let me go ahead and speak. Let me go ahead and speak to this topic. Let me go ahead and say this. No, polygamy is not a future alternative. Let me go ahead and just say this real, let me, let me go ahead. I was going to do an entire show. But go ahead and say something right now. A lot of you guys out here talking this polygamy shit. You, you're too broke to afford one woman. You ain't making the $10,000 a month that it takes to even get yourself to the kind of high value life you're talking about. And you're talking about having two women, three women. Why? Because a plague or famine, these women are going to come crawling back to you. Let me tell you something. There has always been those with and those without. Polygamy kind of stuff, harems are reserved for men with immense power and wealth, not average everyday guys just because there are too many women. Far too many guys, far too many black men, you're middle, you're you're right there in the middle at best. Middle, maybe you're anywhere from the top top 50% to maybe uh top 20%. You're right there, 50 to 80 percent, and you expect to have four or five women because all of a sudden women no, no, stop living this freaking fantasy. Never in recorded history have you seen a society to where polygamy was just rampant. The Black Death, bubonic plague, when one third of Europe died. You didn't see a men with five wives. When one out of every three people died, see what it really is, is it's much more of some sort of, and, and, that, and not the person who asked the question, so not him. But far too often when I see this question asked, it tends to be asked from guys who have kind of OD'd on these red pills. Guys who are living this masturbatory, uh, hot hot boy summer fantasy that ah all these women are going to get their comeuppance because I got a job and benefits she's going to have to come back to the regular guy and then I can have 10 hot chicks no no Mormons have never been widespread anything so no there will not be any widespread freaking polygamy all right, let you go ahead and get in here. Uh, now you now 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 hold on. I'm gonna say this, T. Uh, keep all the personal stuff personal, <laughs> but uh, talk about uh, you're um, you're connecting. Let me see if we can get you in here. Okay. All right, put you back in the way. Come on back, Abby. Terry, I'm going to have to bring you back. Abby, I don't hear you. Polygamy won't take a hold, man. No, it's not even human nature. Polygamy will cause... Polygamy... I mean, the, the dude with 10 wives would be dead. 
The fantasy, yeah. Uh, Abby, you need to connect your audio. But again, if you want polygamy, knock yourself out. But it will not become wide-ranging and far-spread. Nope. Hello? Hello? Hey, Abby. Hello. Hello, Hello Abby. Mr. Samuel. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I am good. What do you got for me on the topic? Um, I just wanted to add that um, in the context of forgiveness, um, forgiving um, your parents for any kind of abuse, when you talk about um, mm -hmm. any kind of um, uh, therapy and things like that, it can also be really helpful for you to help to go through a, a new relationship in a different light. Right. That's all. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Have you had to do that yourself? Yes, yes. Uh, I spent a lot of money on, on therapy. <laughs> well, uh, hey, it's good money money well spent, though, wouldn't you say? Yes, 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 uh, definitely. I'm now engaged. So oh, well, happy. gone in. Are you in the, what part of the country are you in? I'm in Toronto. Toronto. Well, thank you for calling in. Uh, I want to see some pictures of a wedding. <laughs> I want to see pictures of some weddings and some cakes and some babies and some, yeah, I put that all <laughs> on my channel. I'm all about that. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. All right, Terry Jones. Terry Jones, you're up next. Oh, what's going on? Uh, your your audio's not connected. Your audio is not connected. So we're going to let you go ahead while you're getting your audio connected, and we'll come back to you. <laughs> Ebony, what's going on, sister? I need you to get your, uh, I need you to turn the YouTube off in the background and then get your audio up. Okay, yeah. You got to unmute yourself. Yeah, man. See, forgiveness. I'm going to tell you, forgiveness is hard, man, because it's anger feels, anger makes you feel something. But what you realize with anger is when it becomes the only feeling you have, you can't really start to feel anything else to where I shot a video today talking about how to be treated well. And see, when all you're used to is negative or bad, you'll create it. You'll create it. You'll create it. You'll create it. Yeah, two plus people. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, guys in chat, Toronto, here I come. Boy, I tell you, boy. See, it all, it, it, you think about it, when you start, it, 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 all right, let's see if we can get her in here right now. All righty, hello. I cannot hear you. All right, we'll let that person come in. All right, Dwayne. Dwayne's not ready either. You guys are gonna have to get yourselves in here and get ready to go. See, the question is, who goes first? I need you ladies in the chat room to answer. I need you ladies. Okay, ladies, I have a question for you. Seriously. In the chat room, who goes first? Who do you think should go first? Things are the way they are between black men and black women. The media has it, you know, the gender war and all this other stuff. Who, who should go first? Who should go first in forgiving? Not just forgiving like your ex-boyfriend. I'm talking about forgiving all of black men and black men forgiving all of black women to where there can just be some basic, simple, common decency and respect. I'm not talking about the Disney fantasy. I'm talking about to where there is not a low level of disrespect and contempt between black women to black men and a low grade hostility from men to women who goes first 
Who goes first? Be honest, ladies. Marcus Love says women must go first. They have to humble themselves, even though he did uh, at me. I don't like being at it, but I get it. Linda Anderson says the women. But see, what I need for somebody is to call in and say why. Because here's the thing. If you can, if a lot of people are saying the women should go first. And then somebody says men are leaders. Ladies first. See, you see, it's 50-50. It's chicken or egg. But I have a, I have a, I have a question though. Let me go ahead and answer some of these questions. Let me go ahead and answer some. I'm going to I'm going to ask a question though. There is not an industry of movies, media, plays or anything like that. You could say that hip hop had an a, an era of of being denigrating to women. But Men in general have not in public, in media, done to black women and their image what black men can say black women have done to black men. But see, the problem is when a black woman steps up to say, I'll go first, she's immediately shot down. You're a pick me. You're a mammy. You're this. You're that. If you want women to go first, guys, you're going to have to give them an air cover to do it. If you want women to go first, gentlemen, you're going to have to make it safe for them to do it. And see, therein lies the problem because some guys will say women should go first. They got to humble themselves. They got to crawl across. Okay, let's say the women do decide to humble themselves. They're going to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm leaving Stragonia and I'm coming back to Wakanda. You got to give them safe passage. And you have to make sure they don't get attacked on the road back. They need provisions and they need to know at each step along the way, there'll be food, water, and shelter. Uh-oh. Hello, Ebony. Hey, I'm here. Speak up, sis. Can you hear me? I can. Go ahead. Okay, I finally made it. Um, so as to what you were saying about, you know, who is it to kind of apologize first? Um, I do feel as though, you know, previously before this, you know, past relationship that I've been in for almost two years, I would say that, um, are you, hold on, are you in a relationship now or are you was a past relationship? Um, right now I am, I would consider it to be a partnership because he doesn't really like the term relationship. Okay. Um, so before that, I would say that I kind of had a more, a more dominant personality and along this entire process, like I've like learned from him to be more feminine, to be more submissive. And, you know, from that, I would Hold on, Ebony. Say, Hold on, Ebony. I want to say, well, I, I got to go ahead and put this in the comment section. Okay. This guy by the name of Greenest Grass sounds like simping. Hold on, Ebony. Let me take care of this dude. Okay. Greener grass. Make sure you go ahead and call on into the show because you're going to have to stand on what that means. See, far too many guys use this word simp. And you're going to have to explain what that means because you want the women to go first. But guys like you, you don't want them to do, you don't want to provide anything. You just want them to come first. And what you think you're going to sit up on the, on the, on the throne like Conan and they're going to crawl across glass. Man, you out of your, please call in. Don't say another thing in the chat room. Call in. If, I, if you guys see him say anything in the chat room, time him out. You call in. Go ahead, Ebony. But yeah, I've, I've definitely learned to, you know, be more apologetic and to be able to like admit when I'm, when I'm sorry or when I mess up and it's kind of like a take accountability for that. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of feel like that's like something that's really important to do when you're dating, if you want to move forward. So how long have you been with your, your, you said your partner? Yeah, that's. How long have you been together? Almost two years. Two years. Uh Uh-oh, you know what's coming next. What, what's what, coming what, next? You don't know what's coming next? What question's coming next? Um, 
for me. I don't think anything is coming next. I think that's kind of the the concern. Okay. I say, do you know what question I'm going to ask next? No. Uh, why y'all together two years and you ain't married? Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be married. Oh, how old is he? He is 33. How old are you? I'm 25. Y'all been here two years? Mm-hmm. You want children? I am open to it. No, 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 no. Now, you know me better than that. <laughs> Don't play with me. Do you um, want children? I want one. All right. You want one. Yeah. Okay. Does he have any? He has one. Oh, has he been married? No. And how old is this child? Four. Oh, so you're okay with being a stepmother to somebody else's child? Yeah, I am. Okay. But are you okay with doing that and not having your own? I don't think so. I think someone telling me that I can't have something makes me want to have oh, it. Oh, oh, well, I, this is between me and you. You're not yeah. looking at YouTube, are you? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. All right. Well, let's talk. We got to talk, though. Yeah. You got two years before the danger zone. Yeah. If you want a child and the man does not want to give you a child or marry you. Okay, let me ask the question this way. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. Are you sitting down? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Knowing what you know now, if you met him again today for the first time, would you be with him two years from today? Yeah. You would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? Um, I just feel like he has taught me a lot about myself. And just really pushed me to be a better person. The only concern I have is if you know, I mean, that all that sounds great. Who's going to argue against that? But if do you know if you want to be married and he doesn't, that's a, going to be a problem. Yeah. It may not seem like a problem now because he's made you a better person and all these other things. That sounds cool. But also, if you want your own biological child, do you ever have to deal with the uh, mother of the child? No. But if you were a wife, but if you were his wife, you would have to. Yeah. See, right now it's very loosey goosey. And here's the thing. He may be a great guy, but you're running out of time. I asked you if all things being equal, if you met him today for the first time, would you be with him? two years from now and it concerns me that you say yeah I would because it sounds like this is the best you think you can get I can I want to be married I can't get married I want a child but I, so let me just stay right here at 25 that's a hell of a thing to say to yourself have you gone to personal counseling or therapy on and off, yes. Uh, what was the diagnosis? Um, well, the, the first counselor I went to, it was more so about like work and a relationship that I was in. And she was, you know, just what was the diagnosis? That. Was it a clinical counselor? No. Have you been to clinical counseling? No, I have not. You need to go. I'm going to tell you why you need to go. There's no way that a woman, anybody should say at 25, I don't, I want to not, I know I want to be married and I know I want to have a child, but I want to throw, give all that away right now because I've been with somebody who's been nice to me and good to me and has taught me a lot for the last two years. You, not everybody's meant to be in your life forever. This is how women become bitter. 
taking men of situations that shouldn't be for a season and a reason and try to give more meaning or import. When I ask you if you would do it all over again and you tell me, yes, that is not a wise or level-headed decision. I don't think any woman would co-sign that. I don't think any man would co-sign that. So that means your self-esteem or your sense of self or your what you feel like you deserve is so little to where you're willing to accept this again. That's not wise. I'm not saying he's a bad person. But this is how our women, this is how people be, like I say, become bitter. You look up 10 years from now or eight years from now and you're still unmarried and you were wanting to have a child. You can't undo these decisions you're making. You get that, right? Yes. So that's why I'm asking you, do you truly want to have a child? And you say you're open. I don't. That's going against your biological imperative. I think, I don't believe you're telling me the truth. When I say that I'm open, it's just because um, my mom and my sister have like both had, you know, kids where my mom was a single mom, my sister was a, a single mom. I'm talking mom. to you. I'm not yeah. worried about them. I'm talking to you. What do you want for your life? I want to be married with a kid and not be a single mom. Well, then own that. That's all I'm saying. If that's what you want, then own it. See, Farton, again, I said it earlier. Fear, scarcity. Never a good decision comes out of those two things. Counseling is what I would suggest seriously, though. You would seriously need to get into that. Because um, at 33, like I said, he may be a great guy. But three years from now, he'll be 36. Three years from now, you'll be 28. His child will be seven. He'll be in a just fine. You'll be closing in on the wall with five years into a relationship with a man who you knew today does not want to marry you. And today does not want to have a child with you. You're right. I know. But you got to know it. You got to know it's right. You have to know what's right for you. And you have to know what's right for you. And you have to own what's right for you. I'm not asking you to believe in any fantasy or the grass is greener, but look, again, people <clears throat> in a black community, we stay in situations that we should have ended far long, shorter, and then in situations we should have stayed, we tend to leave them. That's what this whole broadcast is about. So thanks for calling in. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, guys, it's, I mean... When people when people feel like someone's really done something for them, there's something that's loyalty is great. But you have to be truthful to yourself. See, compromise is different than sacrifice. Compromise is saying you want to live in New York, I want to live in LA. We'll split the difference and we'll move to Dallas. That's compromise. Sacrifice is, I want a child. You already have one. I'll raise your child. Fraught with so many problems, especially when you can have a child. And if any one of us has ever been a step parent or something like that, it's all cool until it becomes legal and then you get that title and then you got responsibility when the money you that when the money that woman is working to make is going out of her paycheck to take care of another woman's child and she can't even have her own child from a man that no no it's never a good thing those are choices decisions like that or you make them in when you're 45 not 25 
Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. There you go. What's going on? Oh, nothing. I'm very happy to be calling in. All righty. What you got on the topic for me? Well, you second chances. I I definitely think um, as it relates to um, relationships, um, I've I've tried to. Well, I've gone and have given second chances to previous relationships, and regrettably, it have, have has not worked. But what I really realized over the last few years is that it begins with forgiveness of oneself as to why as it relates to me, why I kept making the choices that I made and why I was attracting the same type of people. So I had to really forgive myself and do the work as you talked about to include therapy, mm -hmm. uh, counseling and, um, and getting to know myself and, and forgiving, um, you know, past mistakes, um, past, um, you know, parental disappointments mm -hmm. to, um, to be open. To be open to the possibility of love and i'm so happy that i found it i i know i know you did sis attitude no queen devastated correct correct <laughs> correct it's, it's correct. good to come full circle ain't it it is and and I, it's interesting because my husband and i were listening to your sh one of your shows last night and again and that's one of the reasons i was reaching out because again i remember being in that place which is i'll 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 say rebellion for lack of a better mm -hmm. word, mm -hmm. um, because um, you know, thinking that the word submissive was a, a, was, a <laughs> was, was a curse word. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's um, it, it's so funny because uh, my family and friends have said they've never seen me happier, and I and truly I've never been happier. Well, I heard that, man. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to wrap a taste offline, but it's good to hear from you, sis. <laughs> You too. And you keep doing your thizzle. <laughs> you got it. All right. Bye take bye. care. All right. I ain't going to put a lot of my business out in the streets, but I've known the caller for a minute now. For a minute now. Went to I mean, similar place, similar school. And uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's See, when I say I saw it happen with my mother, I've seen it happen with people I know who are 180 degrees opposite. And even if you don't end up with the life you dreamed of, your dream husband, your dream wife, you like yourself more when you forgive yourself and do the work. It ain't meant to be easy, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it when you finally forgive yourself. And, and here's the thing. Let me speak to the men. If you were raised without a father like I was, one of your biggest fears was to be a failure as a father. <laughs> oh, you ain't heard me. If you were raised without a father like I was, one of your fears was to be a failure as a father because you saw your mama, you saw the, all the women talk about men ain't this, men ain't that. You didn't want to be all those bad things. So you tried to become walk on water and become black Jesus. And probably stayed in things you shouldn't have stayed in, did things you shouldn't have did, left situations you stood up. And then when life broke apart, you, through no choice of your own, still became a father like yours. Your kid ain't in your house. Now, you're asking, asking, so wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I ain't a dog or, or I'm not like all these other people. This shouldn't have happened to me. I did it the right way. And then when you mess around and your kid don't interact with you, you don't have the interaction with the kid that you want and you don't have the interaction with the, it's like none of this shit is fair. And it make you want to scream. Remember that song, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, make you want to scream. But no, that's where the therapy thing comes in. Realizing the look, man, life is complex. Things are messy. You're going to have to forgive your ex. Forgive your mama, forgive your daddy, forgive yourself, forgive your kids, forgive your cousin, forgive everybody. All of us are a trip. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> oh, whoo. Especially the brothers who didn't want to be like their daddies. You are not a failure because it did not work.
And you got to forgive yourself. You try to take on so much crap. Just that's right. You you got to forgive. Let me, let me say this again. Let me say this again. Let me say this again. You got to forgive yourself. You're working yourself to death and you're enjoying none of it. If you don't forgive yourself, you can't get some enjoyment out of life. And you deserve you deserve to forgive yourself to get some happiness out of the life you're living right now. Not not five years from now, but today. And it's waiting for you to go ahead and decide to, to let it go. It is waiting for you to decide to let it go. Stop trying to be perfect. Stop trying to be perfect. You never make it. Be the best you you can be. Do the best you can with other people and then leave it up there. Stop trying to make people like you that don't like you, love you that don't love you, forgive the ones you need to forgive. And the thing is, let it go. The story of the prodigal son. He was out in the, in the he took his, he took his share of the inheritance when he came of age and took it and spent it on, 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 on debauchery. He ended up outside of his father's house in the pig pen eating refuse. And the story comes and the story goes. And in a moment of clarity, he came to himself and he said, even the lowliest of servants, while he's in the pig pen eating garbage that they feed the pigs, he's cold in the mud with the pigs and his father's house is over there and there's a party or something going on there. And he came to himself and said, even the lowliest of servants eateth of meat in my father's house. So he got up and he walked into the father's house expecting to be scorned, ridiculed, made fun of, but he had, he had hit his rock bottom. He had had enough. He was like, whatever. It's better to be in that house even scorned or whatever, then out here, this is bullshit. I'd rather be over there. And what happened? When he opened the door, his father fell upon his neck and said, bring me the coat of many colors. He was happy to see his son. That story makes you feel good because the father didn't hold a grudge. The father didn't say, see, I told you. The father said, come on, my boy is home. Woo! <laughs> mm. So many of us have never allowed ourselves to let it go. Just let it, let it go, man. Just let it go. It is so, there's so much power in just letting this shit go. I walk around laughing and singing and joking and people, if you see me in Atlanta, you'll see me walk around with a smile, just like I was in Oklahoma City. Like, why? I've been through a lot of shit. I try to be things that I weren't, try to be perfect and realize, you know what? I'm, I'm flawed, I'm fallible like anything else. And you gotta give yourself a second chance. Third, fourth, and fifth, how many? Keep on. Keep giving yourself the chances you need. <clears throat> Woo! Y'all gonna make me get happy up in this mug. <laughs> mm. Mm. So many of y'all out there know you want better. Know you're tired of this, this continual back and forth and fuss and fight and this and that. It's like, damn, I just want to give it tired, man. Hello? Hello? Hey. Hey, how's it going, Kevin? My name is uh, TJ, and it was pertaining to uh, who I was calling in uh, pertaining to who should forgive who first. Okay. And I believe that <clears throat> I'm not above absolving men of responsibility, but the problem that I believe that you speak about a lot is that we have a lot of feminized men and masculine women. So I believe that the burden 
is on women because in life, what I've noticed as a black man is that a lot of our first great loves and great teachers, the people who we pay attention to the most because we've been deprived of our fathers is the women. So that's why I believe the burden is on them because right now, whether they want to accept it or not, they're the predominance of our teachers. TJ, let me ask you a quick, couple quick questions. How old are you? Uh, me, I'm only 21. <laughs> 21. Was your father in your life? Yes, I was raised by my dad. Okay. So uh, how did you get to have this strong of a feeling of, about black women at 21 years old? Well, I mean, growing up, my mom chose to go out and party and leave my dad. And she chose to go hang out with her friends. And there would be times where I would call her and she wouldn't answer the phone. Times where I wouldn't get to see her. Times where she moved and lived in another state. So the first great pain that I felt in my life was caused by a black woman. And instead of I have a philosophy about life. And my well, let, philosophy me, let me is, let me ask. Let me ask. Is, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Is your mother still alive? Yes. Uh, when was the last time you spoke to her? Uh, a couple of days ago. We're we talk. We're cordial, but we're not that close. Okay. Um, were you raised with mother and father? Who who raised you? My dad. Did your father remarry? Yeah, he did. He had a wife. Okay. He had a wife. You didn't have a stepmother? Yes, yes. She was my stepmother. But the way you said it, he had a wife. You didn't say I had a stepmother. Uh, I wasn't really a fan of her too much. She, uh, did your, she father, your, mother, did your mother and your stepfather have any children together? Uh, my mom is not married. But no, no, no. Your mother, did your another... father and your stepmother have any children? No. Okay. Uh, does your stepmother have any children? No. Okay, so you're an only child? Uh, no, my dad actually just had three more kids when he turned 40. And my mom has a daughter. That okay, let me, let me back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Who's the mother of the... Your dad has three children now? Yeah, it's another woman. Not the stepmother? No. She went the hypergamy route. Let me stop you. So your mother and father, your biological mother and father, were, were, you, were your biological father married to your biological mother? No. Okay. They were teenagers. They said. All, all right. But then your father married a step, married your stepmother. How long were they yeah. married? Uh, about 10 years. 10 years. What age did they get married? Your uh, how, old were you when they ma- how, how old were you when they married? I was about three when they got married. And they divorced when you were roughly 13? Yeah. And from the age of 13 on, did your father have any other girlfriends? Can you repeat that? Your father, did he have another girlfriend or a serious relationship from the time you were 13? Uh, He was single for a little while, and then he started dealing with a woman that he went to high school with. All right, and then Recently. who, and they have three children together? Yes, but they're new, all within the first five years. Right, are they married? No. So your father had your mother, high school sweetheart, child, a love child with her. He married a child, he married a woman for 10 years, they divorced. You said she went the hypergamy route. Okay, then your father, yes. your father was with somebody he knew from high school, and they have one, two, three children in the last five years, but they're not married. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what does your father do for a living? Um, my dad is a licensed pool operator, and he's uh, some kind of a engineer. I'm not sure. Did he go to college? Yes. You said he's a pool operator? Well, he's got certified in that, and then he has, he's also a barber, and then he does like okay, some kind of, he used to work at San Francisco State, so he did some kind of like engineer stuff there. Okay. Are you in college? Uh, I graduated from college. But you don't know what your father does for a living? 
And whether he not he uh, has a degree? No, not really. Okay. No. And you're how old? Twenty one. Doesn't sound like you're incredibly close to your father either. I mean, we are. I grew up in the house with him, but no, it was kind of... No, no, I asked a very simple question. Did your father have a college degree? And you did not say yes, but you know you have one. Right. If you were close to your father, you would know he has a college degree. Right. You're That's not true. close to your father. Your father picked your, your mother. He picked his stepmother. He picked your stepmother, and then he picked this other woman who's not his wife. What's your relationship like with her? The mother of uh, we're the, cordial, but we don't yeah, cordial. But the mother of your half siblings, right? Right. We don't talk much. But I noticed you put all this off on the women and not the father. Right. That's why? true. Uh, why? The reason. The reason. The reason why I believe why is because, like I said, I mean when I look at all of my friends just going to high school just recently, they all of their fathers are not in their lives. So but your like, father's not I'm in your life. Hold on, 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 hold on. Your father and you are not very close. You don't even know if he has a degree. He's put three women. He's put your mother, a step, a, a woman you didn't even call a stepmother who was in your life for half of your existence. You don't even call her right. a stepmother. You said you're cordial. If she was there from age three until 13, she was there through her formative years. You're trying to tell me this woman never cooked a meal for you, never took care of you, never did nothing from three to 13. Yeah. They, yes, they both did. But, no, but, but she had no biological responsibility to you. And you didn't even have Absolutely. the decency to, uh, no, but you didn't even call her your stepmother. This is just some batch. Have you spoke to her since well, they- The reason oh, why- Hold on. Have you spoken to, do you talk to her since the, the, your uh, mother, and, since your father and her divorce? No. Okay. Son, you have misplaced anger. You have misplaced anger. You're, you're, you should be looking directly at your father, not the women. But I understand how you got here. Like so many, like so many, it's easy to look at your mother who wasn't there and to look at the idyllic everybody else. But your father seems to have allowed your mother to go over here. He had a woman for 10 years and now he has another woman with three kids. I would say that you probably don't have the best relationship with those kids either. You've been pretty much, the way you make it sound is you've pretty much been out uh, an outside kid. And that's on your father. Um. Cause he was can the I, one, that, cause he's the I, parent, cause he, no, cause he's the parent that's there. See, the thing you are saying is the black community is in a situation because the women are in charge. They're in charge because they have custody, right? Right. right? Because. No, no, because no, no. I've follow the logic, young man. The women in the black community are in charge because they have custody of the children. Yes or no? Yes. Who had custody of you? My dad. So, who's responsible for you? For me? Yes, the, sta the, the state oh. you're in right now. Who's responsible for you? Use the same I'm logic you used. Use the same logic you came in and used with against the women. Right. Who's responsible for your? I mean, the reason. Who? No, no, sir. You can get to your next point, but use the same logic you came in using against the women. Right. Who's responsible so for for who? me specifically? Yes. For me who? specifically, my who? dad. Yes. I didn't think we were talking about a situation. But the, but, it, but, it's all, but it's re, but it's relevant. See, I asked how right. we got here is how a guy twenty one years old has any of these negative feelings. You should really have no real issues at twenty one years old. But I I, I, I understood. Hold on. You called into the show. Let me do what I do. At 21 years old, you graduated from college. You should, your life should be on the upswing. You should have some optimistic stuff instead of saying that the women have done this and that. right or wrong. I'm not saying it, but the, but oftentimes when young men like yourself lived 
lives to where you were kind of abandoned, felt abandoned, you look for faults. And the fault is, in your eyes, the women. And it mirrors what you're saying. That's, that's some of the issues with these red pill spaces. They catch guys like you. And then, unfortunately, you get things twisted. I said, go back and listen to what I said. I asked you if your mother and father, if your stepmother and your father were married. Yes. And you didn't call her a stepmother. You referred her in an offhanded right. kind of way. She is there for 10 years. Your father picked all of these women. Right. And your father does not sound like the, 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 the most stable dude. He had a child with your, with your mother. The woman he was with for 10 years, you said she went the hypergamy route. What does that mean? She went and married a richer man? The hypergamy route. No, 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 no. Uh, social media got caught up in that. Uh, See, you got all the red pill yeah. talking points at 21. That's why right. I'm I know what I'm talking about. All the red pill talking points. You are far too jaded to be 21. And, and none of this has to do with your personal lived experience with your women. You're blaming your mother. You're blaming right. your stepmother. You're blaming the other woman. And none of this has to do with any of your, your dad put all of this in front of you. You need some serious therapy and some family counseling. You need to sit down and talk to your mother. You need to sit down and talk to your mother. Because here's the thing. This is about forgiveness. Right. Typically, it goes the other way around. Typically, men have to forgive their father and hold their mothers accountable. But for you, it's the other way around. You're going to have to forgive your mother and hold your father accountable and forgive them both because you are far too right. young to be talking about any of the shit you're talking about now. You haven't lived it. What is your longest romantic yeah. relationship with a woman? Um, longest romantic relationship. Are you a virgin? Long, not very long. Are you a virgin? No. What is your longest nope. romantic relationship with a woman? Uh, probably been longest about a year. A year. And at what age was that? Um, 18 to 19. 18 to 19. You guys were together a year while yes. you were in college? Yeah. And uh, is that the person you lost your virginity to? Uh, no. Have you had sex with more than one person? Yeah. Family counseling. Hello? Yeah, family counseling. I'm going to leave it there. Family counseling. You're too young, dude. And I cannot can, put out a little bit of a the response. What? No. Can no. I cut out? No. Okay. No, because at 21, dude, you, you, you're 21. I heard what right. you had to say. I, I understood what you were saying. I didn't say it was wrong. But my thing is, you say the women should come first, right? The women should go first because they bas they basically screwed the community up. Okay. But in order for the women to go first. The no, men, I didn't oh, don't, say that. I heard what you said. That's the overall sentiment. The overall sentiment. Where we are right now, the black community is upside down, the matriarchy, blah, blah, blah. Okay. If the women went first, are you willing to forgive them? Yes. Absolutely. Have you forgiven your mother? I told you I'm cordial with her. That's not for, see, that's bullshit. That's not forgiveness. But the thing is, no, it's I not young man. No, young man. No, 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 no. See, I know what I'm talking about. Cordial is not forgiveness. You don't even talk to your stepmother who was there for 10 years, who helped raise you and take care of you. And the woman who's with your father right now, y'all are cordial. You have shit relationships right. with women. That's why I'm saying I, I need that's to why you more need therapy. The no, you can talk all you want to go pay a therapist. You see, this is one of the problems I have with red pill spaces. They catch guys like this and you guys get the you get you're too young to be talking about hypergamy and all this other shit. When you've had one relationship of one year, you've got family issues. And he still wants to tell me this story like I'm going to change. I listen very well and I know what I'm talking about. You need therapy, young man. Family counseling. 
You don't be cordial with your mother. And you need to hold your father accountable. Ask your dad, why would you pick these women and put me in front of them? This is what it's done to me. Because you had all that heat and holler smoke for the women. She ain't going to have it for the men. See? Uh-oh. The red pill has very good information, but you need to know it needs to be turned off. You need to mute the YouTube channel in the background. And some of you guys OD on this stuff and you're far too young. You need more interactions with women. Donovan Sharp was talking about the 35-35 rule, or was it Mario? You need to interact with at least 35 women dating or whatever. You need to wait before you start making any of these decisions and pronouncements. I mean, anyway, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm AJ. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I was just calling because I believe that it really depends on the situation when it comes to forgiveness. I feel like I have some situations where I personally need to forgive because... What do you mean it depends on the situation? Well, you know, sometimes... Well, first off, how old are you? First off, how old are you? I'm 33. Okay. Go ahead. I was just going to mention that sometimes one person is in the wrong. They may have cheated. Sometimes the other person is in the wrong. They may have not been ready or been rude or dismissive. Um, so I know in my personal situation, I have been dismissive or maybe not taking people seriously that I wish I had. Um, so Overall, I think it's situational, but I think that it's really about the emotional IQ of the person and if they're ready to admit that everyone has their flaws and come to the table and talk about what they did and if they're ready to change. So I, get, I still don't understand what you mean by it's situational. Oh, so like, for instance, if you're saying is, should black men or black women forgive first? Yeah. But I believe every situation is different. Well, it can't be everything. See, it's, that's that, it's, that, that nuance thing doesn't work. It is what it is. Black men and black women don't get along with one another. Who goes first? Um, I was saying my personal situation, I feel like I can go first because I've made some mistakes in certain situations. I'm saying, my, I'm saying the macro situation, I'm talking about black men or black women. What side goes first? Macro. Um, macro, I believe that women might have a little bit more emotional capacity to initiate it and might feel comfortable with being vulnerable. And so if we have that capacity, we can go ahead and, and, and can you, can you just give me a straight, that. can you just give me a straight answer? <laughs> yeah, I, I, sorry. I thought I was. Well, um, I mean, I, see, oftentimes, women. oftentimes women think you're giving a straight answer and men are just, when I said, which, which go first men or women? The answer is either men or women. It's not, well, if I think women, if they have the capacity, they should just, just switch side. Are you saying women should go first? Yeah, that's first? exactly what I said. I think well, that- No, 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 ma'am. No, no, let, ex let me explain something to you. Let me explain. Maybe this is different. See, miscommunication happens between us. I know what it is you think you're saying, but I'm telling you what most men hear. You can accept okay, that. Well, you, can accept that you, can accept, you can accept that or not. I'm just telling you, this is one of the major complaints about men when they speak to women. You use too many words and too many nuance when you just, especially when you're being held down to a yes or no answer. On this channel, it happens all the time when I ask women a hardcore yes or no question. It's called deflection. You'll see people start talking about Wonder Woman bracelets and the shields going up. You can go back and look in the chat room. But anyway, go ahead. I believe women can go first. So in your personal life, do you forgive often? No. Why? I would say often that I've done a lot of work in some of my personal relationships. And when you kind of meet sometimes your situation with 
tools that your therapist has given you, the other person might recognize that as bad behavior. Um, so. Okay, let me try this, AJ. Can you talk to me like I'm four years old? Yeah. Okay. I asked you, do you, how's that working? Do you forgive in your personal relationship? You said no. And I said, why? Tell me, give me the answer like I'm a four year old. I sometimes I don't forgive because sometimes people don't deserve the forgiveness. Thank you. That would serve you much better with men. So you don't forgive because they don't deserve the forgiveness. What do you mean? I think that sometimes they don't appreciate when I come to the table with trying to really explain how I feel and they recognize that as bad behavior instead of um, good communication. They recognize when you try to come to the table and say how you feel, they say you're behaving bad. Yeah. A lot of times people are of the opinion that when you bring up a situation, it's automatically negative and they don't want to heal it. And so they'll just put that negativity on you instead of trying to heal the situation. Um, has this happened, so has this happened with more than one person? Sorry. Has this happened with more than one person? Yes. How many people would you say this has happened with? Um, definitely a lot of my family members, um, mm -hmm. maybe four family members. So do you make any room, AJ, for the possibility? Maybe it's how, it's how you're giving it. Oh, definitely. I've made room for that. Um, and I feel like when I definitely sit there and talk in a very calm way, even with my therapist, it's the group therapy doesn't even sometimes go well. And I don't know what tools to use if none of the tools will work. And sometimes you just have to um, divest. What does that mean? Like take your energy away when you are meeting someone with energy and they aren't coming back with the okay, rest of the process. Human beings are pretty simple. Human beings are pretty simple. Um, and it sounds as though you've made us pretty complex when it comes down to interactions. We tend to treat people nice who treat us nice. We tend to treat people poorly who treat us poorly. If someone did you did wrong by you and they ask you to forgive them, do you forgive them? If someone comes to me with a genuine apology, yes. Ah. But often that doesn't happen. Ah. Does do I often forgive? No, because often the apology doesn't happen. See that? No, no. I I said if, if someone does something wrong and they ask for your forgiveness, do you forgive them? And you said if they come to me with a genuine apology, well, I just said they came to you and asked for forgiveness. That implies a genuine apology. But what you just said, see, what I'm hearing from you is you probably have a very high standard for how someone has to apologize and how you have to be communicated to. And you need to really feel like they really, really mean it. Yeah. That's bullshit. Um, I feel like a sincere apology. That's bullshit. You're saying a sincere apology isn't a No, free I'm saying you're not God. I'm saying what I'm saying is what I'm saying is I've asked you several times to make it simple, but you are going to give it to me the way you want to give it to me. But when someone does the same thing to you, if if someone comes to you and, and asks you for forgiveness, you want them to give it to you the way you want it given. But you don't even do that to me. So I said it's bullshit. You're hypoc you're, it's hypocritical, man. That's why I said, if you have had this situation happen with multiple people, you're the only common denominator. Well, I would have to say that I've spoke to my therapist about this. And sometimes when you talk, come from toxic situations, especially family. Mm -hmm. um, How long have you been with the therapist? Four years. And you're 33? Yeah. Mm. Well, Unfortunately, the world does not owe me or you understanding. Have you been with her for four years? Yes. Have you had any more success in your personal life? Yeah, definitely. I feel like cutting I mean, off some of my family members. No, 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 no. In your, in your, when your personal, let me clarify, your personal romantic life. Yes. Okay. 
So, are you in a long term relationship right now? No. When was the last long term romantic relationship you had? Three years ago. But you, but how can you say you've had more success in that? More what? success in terms of healing, in terms well, of no, 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 no. See, that was very, the why I asked that question very simply. No, I answered your previous question when you I, just said. I know. I, okay, let me re, let me run it back. Would you? You've been with the therapist for four years, and yeah. I'm trying to see if it's worked. And I said, well, you say you've been over four years. The world does not owe you and me understanding, but let's test it. Would you say you've had more success in your relationships? You said yes. And I said, let me clarify your personal romantic relationships. You said yes. And I said, okay, what's your longest? Are you in a long-term romantic relationship? You said no. I said, how long ago was your last long-term relationship? You said three years. Then if you've only been with your therapist for four years and the last relationship you had was three years ago, you haven't had any success. In personal romantic relationships post therapy, I would I wouldn't that's, say that's that's, that's simple math, ma'am. That's 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 not there's no no there's no nuance right there. I guess I don't really like judge the success in terms of length of the relationship. Did I just okay? In your personal relationships with men, have they become easier? Yes. Have they become more productive? Yes. Where is the proof of that? The proof of it is in my peace of mind. It's in the quality of men that I've dated. It's also within my mental health. The proof would be if you had a fucking man. That's the only way to prove that, ma'am. Uh, well, I guess maybe it's time to stop because I don't know why you're cursing at me. I guess yeah, you're... get the fuck off my phone. Bye. Cursing at you because you're a fucking mess. Guaranteed you she went to school for psychology. Well, it all depends upon the intellectual dominion of the world and the transgressions and the, and the aqua meridians of the Bernoulli equations. And if you, if was a fifth and you get down one to do the butt, do you have a man? Nope. Are you having better personal? Are you having better personal relationships? Yes, I certainly am. Where's your man? Don't have one. How do you, how can you tell? Well, I feel better about not having one. Did I did I miss that somebody? Did I miss it? I feel better about not having the thing I said I got. Mm. Gotcha, bitch. Oh! Oh my gosh. I need a drink. <laughs> and what those last two callers just proved is the previous young man, he is not ready to forgive anybody because he's not done the work. And the other caller, she may be in therapy. You may need to switch because you don't see that. Does anyone think that the person I just spoke to was the forgiving, open kind of person be like it's all good let's just move let's let's just squash the past and move forward did anyone get any forgiveness vibes or any of that i mean i'm open did anyone get that <sighs> okay um these things go the feelings go deep the feelings go deep in their heart. But here's the thing. If you have to be, when I started becoming a better person is when I gave up the need to be right. When I was okay with just being correct. When I needed when I, when I had to stop convincing you that I, you got it. All right, cool.
None of us are perfect. We're all flawed. And other races of people seem to be able to deal with each other in imperfect ways and make progress. If we talk about, I hear people talk about black this, black that, and pro-black this. If you can't have black relationships, you can't have black nothing. And if the only way either side is willing to move forward is when the other side completely submits, surrenders, and, and forgives in a way that makes the, you feel as though they really, 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 really mean it. It's a wrap. That is a wrap. So what I would say is for me, I have I look at the people that I had in my life that I was closest to when I was my most toxic or my most negative, and I just cut it. Because oftentimes I have you have relationships with people for 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 negative reasons. But here's a, here's something that does not mean you have to be mean to them, but learning how to detach with love, honor, respect, and just saying, hey. We're just going in different places, giving yourself permission to, to become the best version of you. That's really what it comes down to for so many of us. So I was telling a young guy, you know, uh, the red pill. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of you guys in here, I don't, I, I'm, <laughs> the red pill is a reaction. But it's funny, most of the red pill content creators have long-term relationships or wives. Most of them do. You're too young. If you've had one girlfriend, you're a virgin, you got nothing to balance it out with except other people's experiences. I call that. I'm about to shut this down, guys. I'm. Uh, well, we got some more calls. We got seven people in here waiting. Hello. Hello. How are you? Gladys. Hi. Hi, Kevin. Can you hear me? Hey, Gladys. How are you? You need to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. How are I'm you, Gladys? Sorry. I'm well. How are you? Thanks for having me. Did you give the pips the night off? Pardon? Never mind. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I think us women should go first in terms of forgiveness. Okay. Um, the environment that we live in today, I believe that men are dealt a harder hand. Like you get attacked from all sides. And um, in this society, you know, we get a lot of how do you say by with the dominant society we get a lot of like props from them mm -hmm. as black women you know you go girl and we get um help from the government and so on and yeah i think we should just go first and forgive how, our men. How, how old are you i'm 29 but i'm 30 like in a month <laughs> uh oh cool so i know <laughs> how is uh how is that manifesting in your actual personal life uh are you in a serious relationship no not at the moment um how are your interactions with uh men these days um i'd say positive very positive yeah when's the last time you had an ltr or a long-term relationship well it was five months ago but it wasn't long term it was only like six months okay that's 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 where long term starts. Okay. <laughs> so why'd you guys uh why'd you guys go your separate ways? Um so he had some depression issues and like I found out he had to take pills all the time and that's why. He but otherwise he was great. I mean Oh, oh okay. What well, he had to take like Prozac? Uh 
he took like a natural like cannabis but he told me like he has really deep um mental health issues and was his... it prescribed by a physician no did he have a was he have a clinical diagnosis of depression by a physician yes he's had that before and he opened up like later on and, no 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 um... what, I, what i'm what i'm trying to get to is did a did a clinician diagnose him with depression uh i'm not sure i believe so yes i, I mean a clinician is that a doc like a yeah because doc, because you know? it sounds as though you stopped yeah part of the reason why you guys aren't together is uh his his drug his his taking of psychiatric medications that's what you were saying is yeah. medication oh and, yeah so he did say that before he did use like stronger ones like all the i guess i forgot the name just but I've heard of them. Prozac? And I got, yeah, I think that's what it was. Oh, okay. And he was taking, know. he was currently taking those when you were together? No, he was taking CBD. So he said it's more natural. Okay. But he told me about like his family and his sister has it and his brother has it too. And I was just like, I was so, like, no. So in other words, you had a guy that you were dealing with and he had an actual clinical diagnosis diagnosis of depression for which he had actually been taken prescribed uh antipsychotic medications like i mean and psychiatric medic psychotic psychiatric meds prozac uh zoloft that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and then he's instead of using that he decided to go to a more homeopathic or different way of using cbds yes and that was the reason you ended the relationship is because you didn't want to be involved with a guy that was in that position well, I mean, yes, but he also like snapped once and like told me to get the fuck out and I got scared, you know, and I was like, oh, okay. So if you don't take it, what, what else will happen? You know, like, well, I got to tell you, Gladys. Yeah. Judging from what you said, we should give, we, women should go first, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Did he hide the fact that he was, had this issue in the past? For the beginning of the relationship. No, 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 yes. no, no, not, not, no, 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 no. I mean, did he come out and tell you on the first day? I mean, did, did you um, have to find out about it yourself or did he tell you? No, he told me. All right. So he did not hide it. No. All right. So he was vulnerable and told you about an issue he actually mm -hmm. was taking care of. Yeah. Yeah. And he snapped one time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not understanding. Uh, Doesn't sound too good for me. So I turned a good, good man down. I, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I mean, I mean, I'm quite sure you're not perfect, right? No, absolutely not. Oh right. So it's not as though the guy was like on lithium or bipolar or something. And even if there are plenty of white people, Hispanic people, mm -hmm. Asian people, oh, Middle Eastern people yeah. who, who run, I, hell, I've been on Prozac or Zoloft. Oh. I guess you'd have turned me down too. So I, I, oh, whoa, whoa, oh my God. whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait I don't whoa. take any medicine. Sorry. I don't give a shit. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I guess you'd have said, well, that motherfucker's a crackpot too. Mm -mm. See, black, mm -hmm. see, black men, see, this is why mm -hmm. black men don't do what that brother did. Because you yeah. judged him for it. Mm -hmm. Shame on you. Because you run the tape back. You said, other than that, he was a great guy. So he had an issue that he didn't ask for. And yeah. he did the responsible thing and went and sought counsel of a doctor got a written prescription and did what the fuck he was supposed to mm -hmm. he told you about it and then even decided to go the more homeopathic way which is perfectly fine and your prissy ass decided to leave him good for you ma'am like i said too many of our sisters have perfectly suitable men and you blow it. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you walked on water? How was it? Tell us about it. How far did you get? 
Because you must be capable of some incredible shit. I mean, you don't want to say we should forgive our brothers. All this shit they have to go through. This country will make black men fucking crazy. No, I, I understand that. Well, no, you don't. You left the one that was by your side. Mm -hmm. So tell us how you understand, sis. Yeah, I mean, I definitely just walked out on someone great, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. You're almost 30. And you left him for something that easy? So I mean, let's flip this, let's flip this, let's flip it up. Let's say you gained 20 pounds. You don't want him to leave you too, right? Yeah. You say, I don't take those medications. Did you even do any homework on it? Did you look up anything? Did you make any calls to professionals? Please tell me you at least did some due diligence to understand what the condition was, what the medication was, what it was for. To see if it was legitimate. Please tell me you at least did that. I did not. No, no. Instead, you judged him for being a fucked up. God damn it. Why does this bother me? Because I sit here and tell people oh, go every day to get therapy and do something about it. And this is the fear a lot of people have. Mm-hmm. You owe that man an apology. I do. And um, I will, I'll, I'll definitely contact him again. And apologize. It has to be more than words, people. All this, well, we sh this side should go first, this side should go first. It has to be more than words. All right, I can't, I can't, I, I'm done. I uh, know, no, 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 no. It's almost one o'clock, guys. You know, Gladys, I, I had to go there to make a point. So forgive me for yelling. It wasn't yelling at you. It's yelling at the situation. Again, sis, you said all the things, you know everything that black men are under and you threw away a perfectly suitable black man for nothing for doing the right thing. And this is why black men are like, you're supposed to be the most educated, the most intelligent, and you made a superstitious, what, you didn't even go see? Well, clinically depression, here are the, here are the prescribed treatments, and cannabis, the, cannabis is one of the possible medications. You know, when I was going through my depression, you know how many people in the Bible Belt told me to pray it away? I'm like, you're not dealing with the panic attacks. You're not dealing with the, the panic attacks that make you feel like you're having a heart attack. I'm in good shape, but panic attacks? This, don't be taking that crazy medication. You know how many family members I had to cuss smooth out? Don't be on that crazy medication. I almost had to whoop several relatives, natural ass, for how they were talking about. These people had more issues than I had in my pinky finger and because I was on Prozac for a short period of time for panic attacks, for some very real issues. See, everybody else in the world can do it the right way. But black men are supposed to be superhuman, and so are black women. And then you wonder, 
why we can't get together. We don't give each other opportunity to be vulnerable, to fail, to do anything else. What it will say to Jada, the fact to be able to go through life with somebody and to be vulnerable to make mistakes without fear of losing your family. We don't grant each other that. We have so little patience with each other. It is, oh, no, mm -mm, no, no, mm -mm. we're going to let it go. I'm going to let the rest of y'all call in tonight. I'm going to let the rest of y'all call in tonight. Y'all want to get it off your chest, get it off your chest. This has to be talked about. Hello? Oh, that bothers me. That bothers me. Dwayne, un unmute yourself. Hello? Hello? Hey, Dwayne. What you got for me? Hey, uh, big fan of the show. I see the uh, channel growing. I just wanted to congratulate you on that. Thank you very much. And um, off topic, I just wanted to know, uh, when are we going to get a Velvet Jones uh, channel going <laughs> on? I don't know, bro. I don't know. But did you have anything on the topic or did you just want to kind of get that in? Oh, uh, no, I just wanted to uh, congratulate you on the uh, channel growth. All right. Appreciate it, man. More on that one coming pretty soon. But I want to stay kind of fixed on this one because there are several people. But thank you for calling in, brother. I appreciate it. It's, keep watching. Thank you very much. Brother hung in there for a minute. So look, ladies, let me say something. Let me let me channel something for the men. Many brothers fear being vulnerable, fear failing, because they don't want you know how many brothers, how many men out there fear try you know how many men out there fear trying to do something? Because they don't want to fail. Because they don't want to, they don't want to get to see how you look at them when they fail. You got men who will say, I'll stay right here because I know I can do this. But if I try to reach up to here, if I fail, I'll never hear the end of it. That's bull crap. Don't type in all caps, you'll get blocked. Um, guys, you're going to have to actually, um, all right. Hello. Uh, Alexander, you're not here, brother. You're not here. Uh, let me see. Hello, brother Jarrell. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can. What's your first name? Hey, uh, uh brother Jarrell. What do you got for me? I'm 55 years old. Divorced, married for 25 years, longest relationship. Three months into our marriage, uh, and we were church going people. My, my wife cheated in the church. And I hung in there until my kids were 22 and 19. So, okay. So, it, <laughs> that wasn't the reason why I, <laughs> I just figured I'd share that bit with you before I uh, raise the point of, of the discussion. I had a girlfriend that I recently had dated early on after my divorce in 2016. Okay. And she um, had married a guy who only wanted to really be with her. Mm -hmm. And he had enough money to where he was able to afford for her to be a stay home mom, raise these two kids. Okay. Do, do me and, a favor. I got five more people in. Can you get. get okay. Get, get, get. So the, lo the long and the short of it is. He wasn't, he really only wanted her, but he endured the marriage to where the two kids grew up. And after that, he expected her to roll off into the sunset where it was just going to be him and her. Mm -hmm. And she ended up getting into a job. She became a nurse. Okay. But everybody in her circle, basically. This is your uh, ex-girlfriend, right? Yeah. They, they, they came down on her for, okay. uh, or, or, they but how does this have to, what does this have to do with you? Well, it was more just it was just more of a of a story of of uh, not being aware to where she she wasn't able to. She, brother, 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 brother. You fifty five. <laughs> this woman's an ex girlfriend. She's an ex girlfriend. And why the whole, you, the, the, but why? But no, no, no. Why are you no? 
No. Why? How long ago was y'all together? Um, I'd say maybe 2017, 16. like it's three years. January ago. 2017. You still got feelings? So you still in love? What do you still got feelings for? No, 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 you got, no. There's something, I, dude. But I, you I, shouldn't. You shouldn't be. What I'm saying is, you shouldn't be worrying about what next girlfriend is doing with another dude. No, it was a unique story in as much as that she got upset when while she was in nursing school. Ah, okay. Now you're off the subject and it makes no sense. But I appreciate you calling in. I don't know no guys. I can't do this. It's late, man. <laughs> Let's get to the point. You know, telling me about somebody else's relationship. That's no, not hello. Hello? Hello, first name. Uh my name is Matty Op. Matty Op, how old are you? Uh I'm eighteen years old. We all right. I want to always too young. You're too young for the show. All right. No 18 year olds. Nope, 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 nope. Not gonna happen. Um mm -mm. don't get it. You guys need to go live some life. Uh, Ali. Uh, hello, can you hear me? What's your first name? Uh, Hussein. What do you got? How old are you? Uh, I'm 22, sir. What do you got on the topic? Uh, I just want to add my two cents a bit. Um, I don't want to say like I understand because I wasn't raised in America. Okay. But in my opinion. Okay, where were, you I, where were you raised? Hello? Where were you raised? I was raised in uh, East Africa. East Africa. And what's the longest relationship you've ever had? Uh, about a year. Was that with a woman from here? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so when it comes to the topic of forgiveness, I can see both sides, I guess. So I wasn't raised here. And that's why I don't, I wasn't raised in this culture. So I don't think I could say that. Yeah, that's, that's, my own, that's my only issue, man, because hearing other people talk about something i mean you're have, welcome to have an opinion but it's not like a lot of people are going to really resonate with it yes you and that's why saying? i just wanted to put a disclaimer okay well here's yeah. the thing when i do part two to this and i open it up for a global issue that may be a more appropriate time to call in but thank you for being okay. up front with me though thank you okay. my friend. bye bye thank you sir no problem bye bye yeah i mean i'm not trying to be rude to the previous caller or the other caller but 18 i mean I mean, no disrespect, but you're too young to really be in this conversation. Star, unmute your, hello. Hi, hello. Hi, first name? Hi, it's Star. And how old are you? Hi, I'm 23. Okay, what do you have for me on the topic? So I'll just get straight to the point. I know that you said there's a lot of people that are waiting and keeping with the theme of forgiveness. You've called in before. Yes. Hi. Mm -hmm. You you you're the young lady I told to to listen to your parents. No, that's not me. But I did call them before. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sounds familiar. But go ahead. Go ahead. Hi. Yes, I did speak to you before. I was just calling because in keeping with the theme of forgiveness and non-judgmental, I just wanted to say that I did judge you when I first watched your channel just because I saw the titles. But after staying for a little bit, I saw that you actually give really good advice. And I just want to say that. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate it. And it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to be, and sometimes it's hard. Uh, all right, Alexander, uh, you need to go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, give you a second to unmute yourself. Here's the thing. Um, let me go ahead and do this. Let me round this out with a little bit of with without the. Here's why I believe in therapy so much. I actually had somebody ask, "Why are you supporting therapy? That's the oppressors." Look, without therapy, without without fixing yourself, there's no hope. If you don't have hope for the future, if you don't have hope for something could be better, there's no reason to even get up anymore. If there's no hope, there's no reason. If there's no hope for you, you have no hope for anybody else. That's why the first thing you need to do is get some hope in your life. See that there's a reason to keep on doing this. Have you ever, okay, that sounds like bull crap to you. Okay, let me ask you, how many times have you heard about a star or a celebrity like Robin Williams or somebody like that who commits suicide. 
famous multimillionaires, people love them and they end their lives. And you're like, why would you end your life? You've got all that money, fame. Life has to be great. Why would you do it? Because in your mind, they got everything that a world could want, but they had no hope. Now, Robin Williams may be clinical because of psychological issues, so forgive me if I'm wrong on that one, but you get the point. Everyone goes through point dark periods, periods of despair. That's why I got so angry with the previous caller, Gladys, because, but for the grace of God, there goes you. Keep living, lady. You will be next. You'll have your turn down there. That's what those medications are for, to help level you out, to help. If you need to take them, take them. If you don't need to take them, take them. But we got to stop judging each other so harshly, especially when you say the things you say that you know how the world is. And here's the thing. Men, some of the guys didn't like what I said. You sound like a super simp. Look here, man. You want to, mm, don't go there. Don't get ego. You guys need to stop using that word simp. You sound stupid. You guys throw this word simp around as if you know what the hell you're talking about. You sound, most of you guys sound plum dumb. Oh, these women need to bow down and humble themselves and forgive and da da da. So all these strange, these women you don't know need to all humble themselves and then you want them to come crawling back, but yet you don't want to give them any air cover. You, sir, I don't want to be associated with any of you because that's some sadistic shit. You want to see people in pain. And why you would want to see a group of people in pain is nothing I want to lose any sleep wondering about. Let me say it again. Why you want to see a group of people in pain is nothing I want to lose sleep about or worry about. I don't want to be associated with you. Take your subscriber, take your subscription, leave. I am going to go back through the chat room. And everybody that said something crazy like that, you go find yourself likely blocked on this channel. I have no more tolerance for intolerant people. I don't tolerate intolerance. If you, I mean, they strags over here, there are plenty of content. Go over to where that is. Go over there. I don't believe women are the enemy. I don't believe men are the enemy. We all got things going on. And you know what? Most people want to get together. Shout out to my, my uh, friend, Terry. I know the past. I know some of the past she was on. And I'm going to tell you, it warms my heart to see people actually happy. Some folks don't want to be happy because all you understand is upset and anger and hostility. That ain't how I look at life. That ain't how I roll. And, how, and let me go ahead and shout this brother out right here. He has been going ham up in the chat room. Uh, Bro, um, my brother Ike, Ike has been going crazy. Uh, Bernoulli equation, fellow engineer, man. They don't know nothing about them, these Bernoulli equations, man. Shout out to the geek humor. All right, going forward, and here's the thing. I don't mind if we have different belief systems and things. Just, I just want people, to, I want men to be happy. This year was the year of the happy Henry. I want men to be happy. And even if you choose to live the life of a, a red pill MGTOW monk, as long as you're a happy one, with a smile on your face, eating your favorite pizza, enjoying life, hey, brother, you got it for me. I don't want to see some sour puss dudes that aren't happy. And ladies, men do expect a lot. But there are men that are going to sit back and say, all right, if you're willing to go, you can come. Somebody's going to have to decide who goes first. In your life, you got to make that decision. In my life, I've chosen to make it me. I usually go first doing hard things in my life. The whole I don't beef was because I wanted to be known I don't beef. 
So when everything, anything needs to be squashed, I can at least be on the record of saying he ain't never thrown the bar back. Oh, I make no mistake. I'm on YouTube for business. Oh, yes. But in my personal life, I move the same way. Even people will have really diehard reasons to really dislike. I would rather say nothing. The 48 Laws of Power is a is a book that is a good read, but there's a lot of good knowledge that you should really live in it as a man. It will save us a lot of mistakes. Conversation with women is exhausting. Well, then find different women to talk to. You get to choose, uh, uh, Halsley85. You get to choose the women you talk to. This is a this is a YouTube show and a program. I got to take them as they come. But in your personal life, you get to choose. You get to choose. So uh, at the end of the day, that's where we're at. Appreciate, appreciate everybody who's coming to the channel, helping the channel to grow. It's only going to go forward, guys. There are going to be more people coming into the space. I got three videos I have to get edited and uploaded today, between today and Wednesday. Uh, videos up on Patreon. There's going to be at least six videos dropping this week. Pre-recorded content. Yes, frames, fragrance, and footwear. I did a haul video on all the crazy fragrances that I just picked up. Let me see. Maybe I could just show you a snippet real quick. Um, I did a haul video. Um, and it's crazy, right? Yeah, to the no, 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 no. Hmm. no, no, to the no, no. I don't know how that happened. But I did a haul video. But let me see if I can get it up here. Give you, I, give you guys a night. Long haul video. Let's get into it. <clears throat> Welcome to the channel where fashion meets fragrance. Let's see if I can get you a quick picture of it. I don't want to tip my hand. But look at that crazy haul video, right? Let's see if I can get that. Look at all that. That's a haul video. Look at all this stuff right here, man. Wow. I did a video with all that as a haul. And then, um, let's see. What's next? What else did I do? What's my name? Uh, oh, yeah. And the question. I better lower the volume on this thing. Yeah, that was a haul video. Uh, was this the frames video? Let's say, yeah, this is the frames video. So I did the frames video. So that's the frames video. Mm-hmm. Frames video. We got a, a video about frames coming in. And then we got uh a treat yourself well video. That's a uh Patreon exclusive video. This is gonna be a good week of videos, man. And then we got the dope shoe video. I like those. Mm. Yeah, man, you gotta look at those. Look at them. Mm. 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 Stank on you, boy. Stank on you. It's the little things in life, gentlemen. It's the little things in life, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, that's what we got coming up. Oh, yeah. Let me go back and see if I can, uh, YouTube, oh, like what I got you guys, YouTube is doing some crazy things with, it's hard, the live chat doesn't show up on mobile devices anymore, uh, and it's, it's system-wide, I can't do anything about it, um, so I didn't do this, guys, YouTube did this, but anyway, we gotta get up out of here, we got we gotta get up out of here. It's late, man. It's late, man. Oh, yeah, the soundtrack. 
It's with the editor. The playlist soundtrack is with the editor. Music to groove to. Shout out to all my friends in California who's back on lockdown. Let's do it in opposite way. Join me on Patreon for videos you will only see there. Monday, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Videos that are in the... Join me on IG for videos you will only see there in the frat room. When they're up, they're up. When they're gone, they're gone. Email me at info by kevinsamuels.com with your show ideas, things like that, or go to buykevinsamuels.com to book your one-on-one consultation, your advice line, your personal communication, your virtual consult, all that good stuff. But keep it business. Don't send me a big, long comment wall. Also, I will be bringing some more people onto the show. So if you have an interesting show idea, maybe I'll bring you on. If you want to get a one-on-one interview on the show, there is an interview fee. Don't do this for peanuts. stuff right change up the scene wait till the new drone footage the artist right here is actually making me my own song they'll be singing my own song made for you guys you can't call in the show is over Good night.